Hey guys, how's it going? Tennessee Yankee. I'll show you my new hat. I just got this. Watts Bar. So this is the lake that we live at, Watts Bar Lake in East Tennessee. It's about 39,000 acres. Just got this cool little hat. So, hey, in celebration of the lake, got a DIY goodie for you. And actually what this one is tonight is we're going to go back to the modular jet ski anchor. I'm doing 2.0. Um, I think I got an idea to improve it and I'll show you real quick why. If you watched my first video on the modular jet ski anchor, you know it was a, it was a two piece. I had the bottom section here with the coupler and then here's the top piece and then here is where the two go together like so the problem was is you never really had a ton of space uh, that you could utilize here in the coupler with the top here so really bottom line is you never got a lot of meat here to grab onto and then on top of that it was really tight fit you you know pvc you get it together it's kind of kind of hard to line up sometimes it really sticks and the problem is i couldn't make this hole any bigger than uh, i wanted to have a bigger hole so i could run my pin through because we were running these little hitch pins through there and it'd be nice to have a bigger hole, but I couldn't because I don't have enough meat there to make a bigger hole. So um, this weekend we were actually parked out in a pretty high wake area and I had to readjust my anchor a few times. And then one of the times it just finally did one of these deals on me. It still held, the pin was still in there, um, but it broke loose. And I was also struggling just a little bit with Everything still fit in my trunk area, like I showed you before, but um, I have an idea to even take up less space. I think it's going to work pretty good. We'll find out. Uh, we'll build one. Uh, but my idea now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have the same type of setup on the bottom. I'll, I'll use the same, reuse the same anchor. I'm going to keep about the same length of inch and a half PVC. Obviously, I won't have the coupler. And then I'll just run this piece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a larger 2-inch piece of PVC. And what's nice about that is the 2-inch will slide all the way over it. And then I'll be able to store it together in just this space. And then what I'll do is I'll pull the 2-inch up. And then I stop by Tractor Supply. And I got a very large coupler. And since I won't have that, uh, or a very large hitch pin, since I won't have that coupler to deal with, um, I'm just going to be able to drill an even bigger hole than I need, and then it should make it fairly easy to line the two up. Plus the fact that I'll be going from two inch to one and a half inch PVC, so it'll turn really easy. So that's what I'm going to build, a new modular jet ski anchor 2.0. So... Thanks for checking it out and stay tuned. Let's get it done. All right, I got my old augers removed from my previous ones. I'm going to go with 17 inches for the two inch piece and 17 inches for the one and a half inch piece. So overall, uh, this thing will be 41 inches once we add the auger to the uh, one and a half inch piece. And then I'll reuse my one inch handles from before. Those are 12 inches long. All right, guys, so there was a flaw in my original thinking. I said we would do 17 plus 17. I didn't think about that very well because obviously I said overall we'd have, you know, this plus our 41. Well, you can't stick them together when they're just touching. So, um, I went ahead and I just added, because I have more two inch material than one and a half inch material, I just went ahead and added another four inches. So we'll have four inches of overlap to make the connection. And earlier I also said, oh, I'm going to put two of these in there. Um, obviously that 
it's probably going to be a little bit overkill for that area. I'm just going to try one, see how it goes. Um, so overall, the change here, we're going to go from 17 inches on the 2-inch piece to 21 inches. So I just went down to my jet ski and tested that out, and it still fits. Um, and obviously, again, I got the big FX HO trunk, uh, like in my last video. So you'll have to do what works for your size. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one more piece to size. Okay, I think I'm going to go a little bit farther down this time on my handle insert. So before I was at three and a half inches, I'm going to go down to five inches just to get a little bit more meat on there. Okay, and then we're going to use the same one and a quarter inch um, hole drill that we used before to make that. And then that will take our handle right here. Now, while we're in the mood for marking stuff, we said what we were going to do is we we're going to run this smaller piece into this one about four inches. And then we want to put our pin in halfway. So we want to put our pin in two inches. So let's make a two inch mark on the two inch piece. Okay. And that's where we'll drill our coupler hole through. Now I'm going to make a four inch mark on this piece. And that way, when we drill through, we'll know where we want this piece to be. Okay, this is kind of redneck the way I'm doing this, but I think it's going to work um, because that's how I roll. So I have uh, I have this marked at four inches. I put a piece of tape on there for my stopping point, and I want to shim this in there so it's nice and centered when I drill my hole. So I'm actually putting some business cards on the top and bottom to try to take up that space and make sure it's kind of even. Probably getting a little fancier than I need to, but I want it to be equal. And you can't beat business cards for this kind of thing. Getting some pretty good tension there. So I got three on the bottom. I'm going to put one more down there. And then I'll do one more on the top. So four on the top, four on the bottom. That last one's not even fitting that well, so I guess it's all right. So now let me pull it out to 
I get to the edge of the tape. All right, that's pretty secure, good enough. Now I'll do my best to drill a straight hole. Actually, I'm going to throw a clamp on here. The clamp could be my stop. Now let's see how our pin works. I made it kind of tight for the first round. I guess that's a little too tight. I better go up one size. How about that? Business cards. That goes in a lot easier than the old setup. Now we'll drill for the handle. So I want to go all the way through with my pilot hole and then I'll follow it up with the hole drill. If you ever have problems getting these out, I've used screwdrivers before, but like a Harbor Freight dental tool, that works really good to reach in there and pry it out. for the handle starting to come together so the last thing we got to do is we got to put the auger in this end so now we got to mark for this place star auger I'll put a link of information of this in the description but if you haven't watched any of my other videos yet on my augers, um, this particular one, you can get it at you know Amazon, Home Depot, wherever. Um, they've really fluctuated in price over the years, like most metals. Um, but really, what they are is it's a it's a dock auger. If you had a a dock at the lake that you had a metal piping, this is what would go on the ground for your metal pipe that goes out. So they're pretty heavy duty. Um, this particular hole is in about three quarters of an inch so two options we can stick it on top here put our pencil through and make a hole uh, or like here I had already measured it 
three quarters and made a line. I'll just follow it up with a hole here and check my line. And yeah, here was my hole. So we'll make a hole here. What we'll do is we'll come in. We're just going to make the hole halfway through and then we'll make sure and run the drill bit all the way through the entire thing without removing it. When I first made an auger one time, I made a hole on this side and then I made the mistake of making the hole on the other side, which was silly because it didn't perfectly line up. So you want to use this as your template when you're going through. Gonna start a little pilot hole first. but it's probably the one I already had on earlier. That seems to work pretty good. I'll go stick it in the vise. So again, I just wanted to bust through only, and that's really tough. There we go, cleaned up. So now I'll stick the auger in, and then we'll use this to go all the way through. And, moment of truth, see if this is good enough. Perfect. Some of these augers, um, these, they come in two sizes. So this was an uh, inch and a half PVC. And so I think this one was like inch and three eighths. So it's a little bit loose. And then I think they also come in inch and seven eighths. Those also work. I've used them before, but then you just have to have a heat gun and, and heat up the PVC and it's a, a tighter fit. But once you put the nut on here, it's plenty tight enough anyway. So it's kind of nice having the smaller one that you don't have to mess with the heat gun. Plus, I think that probably weakens it up once you heat it up anyway. All right, you guys ready to see it snow? This is the beauty of working outside. Cleaner than when I brought it out of the shop. You guys, I don't know if you ever used these things. I don't even know if I've ever talked about it in one of my videos. But these are my absolute favorite bungee cord on the planet. I probably have about 40 of them. I use them every day, all over the place. They're just incredible. Hang stuff with them, hang cords with them, secure stuff with them. Love them. I'll throw the link in the description. You, something you can easily get from Amazon. They're inexpensive and fun to have around. I always keep about five or ten of them in my truck. It's good for securing stuff there too. Okay, so we're getting down to the finishing touches. Got everything cleaned up. I took a little uh, sandpaper to the the handle opening. There's still a little bit of stuff left there, but what I'm doing now is I'm going to use acetone here to take off the ink. Nothing works better in my opinion. It just comes right off. Plus any marks. 
writing that you had on it. So I usually go over it once with the dirt, you know, get the, get the first pass off and then I'll go over it with a cleaner rag to get the rest. I wanted to do this before I tightened up the augers so I can get in here better. And then after this, I did, I didn't show you guys, but I did put uh, a small hole here and the tops of each one. I'm going to put some string in there and then that'll hold the handle. Um, I got a hole already in the handle, so then that way it can stow away. Because you don't want to be losing parts and have to dig around for them. So it's easy, it's just to tie them together and make sure you get everything where you need it. All right, now we're going to tighten up these augers. So the auger, at least these ones are 9 16 showing you earlier see that tightens up really good here so I prefer the one that you don't have to heat gun noticed I can give you this thing has been in the lake a lot of times and look at that it must use pretty good sticker on there so the part number on this one is PS1100 and again these are made by Playstar in Janesville Wisconsin I'll give you the UPC too because sometimes it's easy to look stuff up with the UPC. So it's six five three nine five seven one one zero 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 three. Guys, this video is probably going to be a little longer than it needs to be, but. I just wanted to take you through all the processes. You can always fast forward if you get bored. But I know when I'm watching a video, a lot of times I find myself sitting there watching the boring parts too because it's fun seeing how other people work. Okay, there's those. So let's put some string on it. All right, since we're at the home stretch, it's probably only right that we crack open a natural light. So what I want to do here is I'm using this paracord. And again, I'm making a handle, so I find it's easiest if I'm careful and I don't burn it until I get it through, otherwise it gets too fat. And there's a, this particular paracord I got, there's like a liner on the inside of it, so I gotta get, get it cut down far enough because it kind of moves around on me. So I get it burnt together. Bunch of crappy strands in that sheath the way it moves around so I want to just cut it tight one more time and then I'll put a knot in it and then I'll use this to pull my knot tight All right, so there's that on the handle. And then the idea is we want enough that we can 
stick it in there to hide it away, but we still want to be able to actually run this way. We're going to tie it to the top here. So we want to be able to come over here and then have enough access to stick it back in. So we'll just cut it right here for now. That should be enough. We can shorten it up. So we'll have it like this. Okay, I'll let this do the work for me. I'll tie it up or I'll burn it off here. So there we have it. Stow it away, pull it out, put it in there and I put it in the water. And then what I usually do at the lake is I have some dock line that I'll be using to tie this off or a bungee. Um, but the dock line I usually just kind of wrap it around each way and it just kind of locks it in there. So let me show you how this works. So obviously you got the bottom. You got the top piece, you saw how we put that together, so that comes apart. You got your handle, so you'll put this in, you'll screw it into the lake bed, get it in there, and then, like I said, if you have a dock line, you can wrap it around each side here, kind of in a T, and that will lock this in place. Otherwise, also I use like a bungee strap. So you might just want to run your bungee strap right through the hole and secure it that way back to your jet ski. So that works good. Check this out, guys. Coyotes are going nuts. Okay guys, one last thing to show you, especially if you haven't seen my other modular jet ski video, I'm reusing these from my original design. So the idea here is, obviously you have this big old auger here, and you don't want that bouncing around inside your fiberglass um, hood area inside your jet ski. So I had to think of a way to protect this inside the jet ski. So I took a four inch piece of PVC and then I had some old composite decking laying around. I made a little template out of that, cut it out with a circular saw and then screwed that in there. You could obviously use, you know, just a treated two by four or any old piece of wood in there, but I used what I had. And then I just tied some string around it and this has worked pretty good. It's never came out yet. So I just uh, ran, some, ran some string through the back side there, some paracord, and then I just crisscross to tie it off. You can kind of see that locks it in place. And then I'll just tie a little knot out here. And that'll last me till I get to the lake and need to untie it. And that's not, not coming out whatsoever. And it's got that nice solid bottom protection. So, so with the new model, that's the overall space it's going to take up. Now this still may be too tall since we had this 4 inch extension on this piece. So I may end up having to store that piece and then store that piece next to it. But we'll see. Maybe we can get it all in like this. All right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. 
And uh, if you found this content helpful, I hope you subscribe and we'll have more in the future. I'm going to do one pretty soon. I said this last year, but I'm going to get around to doing one on my PVC toolbox for the jet ski here real quick. Um, so and then I got some other lake videos coming up. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, here's a live update on the modular jet ski anchors. Been sitting here for about five hours in some pretty heavy wake and they haven't moved, haven't pulled out, doing good. Using the bungees so that takes a lot of the stress off. Um, those work really excellent. So uh, I would suggest getting some of those. But other than that, the uh, revision seems to be working well.